Don't ever count out the retail investors. What we witnessed at the beginning of this year proved that a lot of retail investors, some follow the herd, others are out in the lead. And we're talking about what happened, the meme stock phenomenon. True story, used to work with a person who is brilliant, speaks more languages than any of us would ever hope to, but referred to meme stocks as meme, kind of like Moira from Schitt's Creek. Let's bring in Dan Egan, uh, Betterment Management Director of Behavioral Finance. Let's talk about the meme phenomenon. Um, are we going to see that repeated? Because retail investors are a force under themselves. You know, it's going to be one of those cases of history not repeating, but definitely rhyming. We now know what the playbook is. Uh, there is more power in the hands of individual investors than there ever has been. And that means that they can group together to bring about a, a, a lot of focus onto one specific stock or area in ways that they haven't been able to in the past. Now, that said, professionals are not slow to react and they are not stupid. So while I think that we will see um, continued focus and almost sort of flash mobs in various areas, exactly what that means will change. And we won't see the exact same thing happen again. Um, some areas that I'm kind of curious to look forward to are right. um, areas of socially responsible and ESG investing, where owning a company allows you to take a more activist part of its management. Uh, the vote ETF uh, that was launched is a good example of that, where if investors choose to amass pour into that, it could affect real change in surprising ways. So I don't think that we're going to necessarily see squeezes on short sales the way that we did this past year. Mm -hmm. But that idea of individual investors being able to coordinate together better to make things happen quicker, I think that is here to stay in new and interesting ways. And they, 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 it's a conundrum for the establishment elite who have controlled things for so many years. But here's the perhaps concern. Does the does the retail investor and the meme stock investor, are they part of a herd without really understanding the trajectory they're on? And could those, quote, elite who've controlled the game for so long, could they take advantage of that for their own gain? Oh, without a doubt. Uh, I think we sort of lose sight of the track that uh, nowadays the way that um, the the sort of large incumbents make money has as much to do with the spread on transactions. They're quite happy if you trade smaller cap, more liquid stocks, they can make more money on payment for order flow than they can on commissions mm -hmm. or even betting against you in any way. So the idea that David is going to beat Goliath when it's Goliath's home field is a little bit naive. That said, um, what we saw from Betterment's point of view is a lot of people got excited about investing because of those sort of concentrated speculative crowdsourced bets, um, got involved in it in the mid to late 2020s and early 2021, and got tired of it. Said, you know what, I've been doing this for a while. Um, it's a lot more of a job than I thought it would be now that we've gone out of the fun part of it and are looking to continue to invest, but invest in ways that are a little bit less active, a little bit more responsible, and a little bit more tax aware. When we started the program roughly 45 minutes ago, we actually had a segment talking about what happened to Kathy Wood and ARK Investment this year. A lot of people put their faith in, in people who understand what they're doing, and I'm not going to say Kathy Wood doesn't because she clearly does, but even the best have bad years. Does the retail investor who might pile into a fund that she have has have the wherewithal to understand, okay, it's down today. But over the next year or two, I'm still going to possibly turn a profit here, or do they pull out and make and take the losses? So I'm gonna. Uh, I often think of the Taylor Swift lyrics. Um, I don't like a gold rush. I don't like rushing in with everybody else when they're doing it at the same time. It makes me very uncomfortable. And it feels very easy and uncomfortable to pile into whatever it is that happens to have done well recently, rather than before it's done well or after it has experienced significant losses. One of the most common facets of individual investor behavior that we know of is performance chasing. And we know that performance chasing generally does reduce returns compared to a more average stay the course type strategy. So I do think we, if we can flip the script from being about, I'm comfortable because it has done well recently to, I'm comfortable getting into something because it hasn't, that would be a step of progress. What about, you know, at the beginning, I, I'm looking back at the start of the year, we were all crazy. I mean, it was just cray cray over SPACs. And we're looking at IPO performance in, in 2021. And as you pointed out, 65% of all IPO stocks are in the red. Um, in what's been a phenomenal year, what's the takeaway as we go into 2022? Um, Ask me what my favorite stock is. What is your favorite stock? Every single one of them. 
Every single one of them. I love them all. They're, they're beautiful children and it's wonderful to have thousands of them. Um, one of the great things is that if you invest in all of the stocks, the smaller ones, if they have a really incredible year and they grow much more, you will benefit from that. Um, being able to have exposure to all of them means that you don't have to spend a lot of time picking winners and not just picking winners in general, but picking winners every month, every week, every, every few um, days. And that goes a long way to giving you that upside. Uh, I think the figure I saw was that the S&P 500 is up about 30% so far this year. So you don't actually have to pick winners to win. And I think the, the more that we can wrap our head around, like investing in all the stocks gives you exposure to those pretty impressive returns. 30% up this year with only a 5% drawdown intra-year is almost too good to be true. I actually worry that we've had too good of a year this year, much like we had in 2017. We need to, we need to have a little bit more stress to make those high returns be, feel, feel earned rather than um, just given. I, I want to go slightly off script here and ask you how an investor should look at a, a, a traditional, uh, I do believe uh, Verizon, you know, our former owner uh, led by Hans Vestberg, uh, a, a dividend aristocrat, have paid dividends uh, historically for a long time, but the stock has essentially done nothing and they're rolling out 5G, as Mr. Vestberg would say, 5G uh, next week, unless the FAA puts a, a kibosh on that. Um, how should an investor look at a stock that has essentially been flat? for what, five, six, seven years, but is paying a good dividend. So I think the one thing I always want to keep in mind is that uh, if you are holding those dividends in a taxable account, you are going to get taxed on them. Um, I have I've no sort of strong feelings about pro-dividend or anti-dividend. Um, I do think that caring about dividends per se is a losing strategy. A, a good return with dividends is wonderful. Um, but I also think one of the things I'm worried about is more a matter of what you just said, like, you know, like it's been flat for a while. Um, all investing is about what is going to happen in the future. And a stock that has a good revenue stream that you know is going to be around for a while, like Verizon, even if it's not doing anything exciting, even if it's not going to the moon or even the James Webb telescope, um, if it is providing a sort of steady source of return, then it makes a good part of your portfolio. And that's a lot of the reason many people who own Verizon do appreciate having it in their portfolio. Uh, Dan Egan, Betterment Management Director of Behavioral Finance, we appreciate your joining us today. Have a healthy new year.